today I have a beautiful, amazing, wonderful guest, Stacy McCarthy. Stacy, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Chris. Happy to be here. Yes, glad you're here. So before we go into the questions uh, for the, um, our episode today, I'm going to gush all over you for a little bit. And I had the privilege of, for a second time, participating in one of your amazing events called A Day of Namaste. And I will say I'm still glowing from that event. <laughs> Uh, just thinking of all the connections and wonderful people I met. So um, to give, I want to share with everybody um, some of the highlights because I know with your 35 plus career, 35 plus years as a health, fitness, yoga, and wellness professional, um, Stacy really, for you listening and watching in, um, is an authority, like a foremost authority in living um, cultivating vibrant health and then living a long, happy, and healthy life. Her background includes things like un creating nationally recognized fitness, um, group exercise programs, yoga programs, nutrition programs. You teach at uh, the college level. She teaches mm -hmm. at the college level. She's put together books and DVDs, uh, CEC programs. She's, she's a writer. She's a speaker. Wow. You've been at various <laughs> media outlets. I am, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of tired and energized. I'm reading, reading all of this. I know you've traveled around the world. I've seen your Instagram posts when you've been at some of the big um, conferences. And, and at the same time, you, uh, Stacey is one of those people that has a heart of gold. I like to say <laughs> you are compassionate with your students and really have that that teacher mindset and that teacher heart to really give back to everybody in, in whatever capacity that you can. So you have scholarship programs that you funded and you support a variety of charities, um, which is just beautiful, a beautiful example to see uh, for me as a, a business owner. And I wanna share this quote, uh, which really I think kind of sums it up. I'm grateful to accomplish, to have accomplished so many things in a field that I love that brings meaningful impact to countless people. <laughs> and with that, again, welcome Stacy. <laughs> so glad you're here with thank all your wisdom and your energy and your, your heart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome. So like I said, um, and we talked a bit before we got on um, mic here is that, um, yeah, this podcast is all about sharing women's stories of when they listen to a calling and um, how they continue to listen to that calling in their lives to to live a fulfilling life and to be their most authentic and i love that that's in your bio right that authenticity and i think that's a beautiful word for you so um so let's start in with the first question okay um and this is all about listening to your calling and you can think about something current or something in the past. Again, I know you've had a long career, so feel free to share whatever you're feeling moved to share. But can you really like reconnect us um, when you had a moment, one of those moments when you felt a calling um, to create, to develop, to pursue something that was really speaking to you? Share with us a little bit of what that was, how, how it felt, and how you then decided to pursue this journey. Well, I was fortunate at a young age to really realize what my talents were and what my love was and be able to put that together. So um, even I know a lot of people graduate from college and never use their degrees, but I actually graduated in the degree that I've been able to use uh, within oh, wow. my own career. So, yeah. So I knew from an early age, I changed majors because I started in a major that wasn't me. And then I, I realized that I love movement. I love health. I love wellness. Mm. So I ended up in exercise physiology and and, and I, I had a great career out of college and I, you know, worked my way up to a chain of health clubs, the COO. And I remember I was, I w it was also a teacher. I'd been teaching that whole time. And when I reached a certain level, they said, well, we don't want you to teach anymore. We want you to run everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I was sitting in my office one day and I was just putting out fires on emails and managing all the managers. And, you know, it was, a, it was a fairly large chain. And I thought, this is not what I was supposed to do. So I'm driving home. I live out in the country a little bit near the beach. And, and I can remember the moment that my shoulders just dropped away from my ears. And I said, I'm going to resign tomorrow. And I went back in, I resigned because 
I wasn't doing what I was really passionate about, and that's always been teaching mm -hmm. and and sharing what I'm really good at, sharing my talents. So I went in, they, you know, the the CEO was quite shocked because I had stock options, I had, you know, the big paycheck, I had the office, they're like, what else? And I said, it's just, it's not fueling me. And the second thing that it wasn't doing is I was in a fairly rigid schedule, and that's not my personality as well, as well. and I had um, very young children at home, and I wanted to be there. I wanted to be the master of my schedule. And so a big impetus was really not only knowing your calling, I think, and, and putting your talents to what your calling is, but also knowing your values. And when you understand mm -hmm. your values really clearly, it helps you move towards your calling in a way that's more sustainable. So for me, I always had this thing in my head that said, if I screw up my kids, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to spend the time with my kids and make sure I was there during the time I couldn't get back. So I rearranged everything and I started, you know, a little home business of, of teaching and it, and it really grew from there of, of knowing your calling, knowing your talents, but also knowing your values of, of what makes you tick. That's beautiful. And I remember you sharing that um, the first workshop that I attended and you talked about your business and that it could have grown super fast but then you would have been out of alignment with what was most important to you, which was, you know, raising your family. So I so appreciate that you, um, you know, share that and help listeners like, or, you know, we can still pursue. So you created a new version of following your calling, right? One that was, like you said, in alignment also with your values. And well, I think as women, it's, it's very challenging because we're pulled in a lot of different directions. And, you know, sometimes we think we have to be it all, do it all. But the reality is, I mean, I believe you can have it all, but you can't have it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I had to make the decision that my husband traveled a lot. I couldn't be that, that global yogi or that global educator that was also traveling because somebody needed to be here with the kids. So I rearranged my schedule to, to do the work I needed to do while they were in school. And, and, right. you know, and your kids are only with you for a short time. It's not for everybody, but for me, because I was very clear that being a mom was super important. It was also important to follow my calling. Mm -hmm. And how do you find that, that there, I don't know if there's really a balance because at some right. time in your life, you're overwhelmed, right? When I had kids and I was trying to do this, I was overwhelmed, right? There was a lot going on, but there is an ebb and flow. And, uh, and, and that's why even when you read my resume, it's because I've been doing this a long time, right? Right. You're able to do it, um, but over a long period of time. I think right. people overestimate what they can do in a year or three years, and they underestimate what they can do in 10 or 20 years. I agree. I've heard that before, and I, I think that's uh, well said when, and a great reminder for everybody. So beautiful. I, I, I love that you were so clear, and, and at the same time, you know, clearing the family values and, and at the same time, you still, you honored yourself to do it in a way, right? Like this, you knew that this was important to teach, to be connected to fitness and health and movement. And you weren't going to, it wasn't either or. And I know for myself, I, when I was raising my kids, I went into that mode for a lot of years of it's either raising, I'm the mom and raising the kids or I'm following the career. And I, for a lot of years had a hard time finding a blend for myself so yeah it's difficult it's difficult yes. and it's uh and and there's a you know there's a a, a lot of uh fear around it with you know, there's money fears or if i'm not working can we support and so you know it's different for every family but if you can and in this day and age for women especially we have so many more opportunities to yes. be able to to still be a, a great mom and still start you know maybe it's a baby business you start off with a baby business, and when the timing is right, you can continue to grow it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Stacey. So, when, so you know I'm all about radiant achievement, and my work centers around teaching women this new paradigm on achievement. When you think of radiant achievement, you know, what does that mean to you? What comes to mind? I think for me, it's um, knowing that what I do is helping myself it's helping my family and it's helping others um, in a way that makes everyone better, healthier and happier. So to mm -hmm. me, that's really radiant achievement. If I'm surrounding um, my circle of everybody who's within my circle, my students, my, my clients, my family and myself in a way, to me, that's radiant achievement. Mm. That's, that's really what it is for me. Right. So it sounds like 
you're it, like everybody is being up leveled, right? Like you're taking care of yourself, your and your family, and your friends, and your circle, and and those you impact. It's like a a lifting of everybody. It is because uh, you know again, uh, you know when we look at achievement, a lot of times we're looking at the success of um, whether you're climbing a corporate ladder or you're starting your own business or how much money you make or or you know what. Uh, nowadays, it's you know how many followers do you have and all of this, mm -hmm. but really it, it goes back to being crystal clear on what's important to you. I, you know, it's the essentials. You have to, we're always asked to do a lot of things, but as, what, what are you saying? If you say yes to something, you have to say no to something else. And I learned this very early. If I say yes to doing something, I've got to say no to something else. And so what to me is the essential thing that matches my value to say yes to. And to me, that's radiant achievement to have mm -hmm. that understanding that um, I'm going to say yes to the things that are aligned with what a radiant achievement is for me. Right. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that answer. So on this 35 plus year journey, what have you seen, or if you look back, um, what has been the most significant or possibly the most surprising inner power that um, has supported you in pursuing your calling? Well, I think an inner calling that I didn't realize I had is, is when I was young, I was very introverted. Um, I was, uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I didn't like my picture taken. I didn't like to be front and center for anything. But as I became more and more knowledgeable, I'm sorry, that's my front door camera. As I became, as I became more knowledgeable and really felt like I had value to share, I found that I actually enjoy being on stage. I enjoyed sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still kind of an introvert at home, but when I get up to share what I'm very passionate about and I see how it's transformed and helped a lot of people, uh, all of a sudden I, my inner power is my, my strength is getting out and sharing that. Beautiful. I, and I've seen that too, because you are very low key, at, you know, at the events, but you are a powerhouse on that stage. And you, what come, what came through to me is you walk your talk, like you live this, what you teach and the movement and the mindset and the, and the um, food, right? That's, that's, it just like seeps from your pores. So I can see where when you're living it, you're in alignment and then you can't help it just to be, yeah. be powerful that way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Even despite you. being yeah the introvert and i'm and i tend to be the same way like i love sitting on my couch having those you know quiet moments um a lot of those quiet moments but but when i'm on my you know you know soapbox or whatever i get my passion going about connecting with women on what i teach it's a, it's a completely different story right. so i think that is something important too for women to think about you know kind of linking it back into the calling is we can say oh I, you know i'm just this normal person i'm just you know whatever we they kind of you know downplay who they are what they're capable of and and know that when you are so passionate about something when it again it's just part of who you are and your your um what's important to you 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 forget about some of that other stuff like you can you find the strength to get up and do what you need to do to well exactly and i you know i, I do train a lot of teachers and uh and, and I, I i tell my teachers because they're very nervous about getting up in front of people and speaking and moving and, and doing what they do and i i tell them that uh, a teacher is a student who's willing to get in front of the room and make mistakes because we're all virtually students, but we're willing to get up there, share what we know, and we're, we're willing to make mistakes and, and learn from that. But right. you have to take the first step of, of whatever it is, whatever your calling is, is take the first step right. and, and, and realize you'll make mistakes, but be willing to do it. Right. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you for that. That's a good reminder for me too, yeah. <laughs> as I go out and teach. So how has your calling changed over time or how, how has it maybe taken you in some surprising directions that you never could have imagined? Mm. Well, gosh, I mean, it's, it's, I have had an amazing career and I think it's taken me in the direction of realizing that you can create what you want to create. If you, if you're passionate about it, if you, if you do 
uh, work at it. And, and it is in your, your wheel of talent, right, of, of right. what you do well. And sometimes, you know, it, you have to know what is it that you do well at because you'll be much more comfortable at that. So I was fortunate to realize what I do well, what I don't do as well and get somebody else to do what I don't do well. <laughs> but I think taking a turn, I think probably the the biggest turn is when I go back to, to the beginning of our conversation is, you know, I thought I was on this trajectory of, you know, running things, you know, building these, these clubs and, and on this one path, and what I found is that was not the best path for me. It was still in the scope of what I do, but that what I really loved was teaching. And I never would have thought that. I mean, if you would have asked me why I was in college, that I would be a professor uh, <laughs> at a college, I would have said there's no way. <laughs> there is no, I didn't like school. I wasn't particularly mm. great at school. Yeah. Uh, but this is, this is life, right? And, and if you yes. just, if you kind of go with what it is you really love and you say yes to the right essential things that are important to you, then it falls into place. Right. And, and so being, be, so at some point you were open to the possibility to become a, a professor, right? Yes. Did yeah, you I was approached. I, I mean, all of it, I, you know, I was very fortunate and luck has a lot to do with career in many ways, hard work and luck, right? Uh, I was fortunate that um, someone approached me and they were building out a whole new program in the kinesiology, health and nutrition department and wanted a whole new yoga program built. And mm. so you know, I wrote the curriculum for both the foundational training and the advanced training. And, and if someone not approached me, it would not have been on my radar at all. And, right. and that's true of much of the things that I did. And, and I think we should, I should go out and pursue things more. <laughs> I, I've been fortunate that things have, come to me. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and honestly, I teach that with, that's one of the things I teach is that we, when we're in that place of alignment and listening um, and, and just, and taking that next step, things will come our way. We don't have to think and work so hard and strategize so hard on, you know, putting this plan together and that plan together. And certainly I'm, I'm a huge planner, so I'm all for having plans, but I, I see where a lot of times myself and other women take that overboard and you, it's almost like you can't move forward unless you have it all figured out and who's my guru and and you then you lose that whole connection of of whatever what opportunities that you're aligned with energetically that magically you get this phone call or this somebody talking to you and and how we can find even more um expansion and joy when we're open for things to come our way yeah, there's a one of uh, one of my favorite books is a book called The Alchemist, oh, and yes. there's a there's a great uh, line in The Alchemist that says, when there's something that you really really want, the whole world conspires in your favor. Yes, but you just have to look for the signs. Yes, and I think a lot of people <laughs> may not see the signs. The I believe the universe is a, a happy, healthy place, and it is working in our favor. Sometimes you have to, you have to look as, you know, is this a sign and the direction I need to go? Right, right. So if I look at your career and kind of continuing on from that frame of conversation and the things that you've done, whether it be the books, the DVDs, um, you know, traveling, and we talked about the schooling, all, all of these key accomplishments in your career, would you say, um, how do I want to ask the question? Would you say a lot of them were just like you just something kind of serendipitously happened versus it be like how much was it like these were strategic things I decided to do versus it uh, it just was like I had this inspired idea one day and I'm like oh I think I'll do a book or I think I'll you know was it has it been a blend of both and how how has that unfolded for you? I think that when you put in the work. You put in, in, in the work and what you're really drawn to that, and you, you stop looking for the rewards and the, and the accolades and whatever may come from it, that things unfold naturally. Sometimes I feel like uh, everyone is, is driving so hard to, to reach yet another pinnacle of success. Okay. But, you know, you have to really ask yourself is, you know, are you, just working to reach another pinnacle of success or are you working 
because this is something you're really passionate about, you really love, and and then working smart right. and allowing things to unfold without looking at, okay, what is it going to give me? Where is it going to take me sometimes? And, and that, to me, is a true calling, right? So, you know, people, uh, you know, at a certain point, they say, when are you going to retire? When are you going to do this? Well, if, you're, <laughs> if you have a mission and a calling, right. there's no such thing as retirement. Like, you know, I, I don't think I will ever retire. What right. would I retire from? This is what I love to do. And that is a calling. I, right? I, I feel exactly the same, exactly the same way, Stacey, that, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see myself that way. So the more we yeah, can connect with what it is that is calling to us. And, and it could be at, at any level. It might not even be a business, right? It could be someone who loves to garden. It could be someone um, with a nonprofit or working in their community. It could be, you know, uh, traveling the world, right? It, there's unlimited what, whatever it is that could be calling to somebody. And uh, yeah, I think if we just stay connected to that, there is no retirement from that at all. (laughs) And also not attaching so much of uh, the reward to it, because if it's truly Mm. your calling, you don't have to attach a reward to it. You don't have to do it because there's a a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, Mm -hmm. The rainbow is the reward. Right, right. Beautiful. The rainbow is the reward. I love that. (laughs) I love that. So, um, Let's talk a little about a little bit about one of the powers and the power I'd love to talk to you about because you're all about ritual is the power of ritual. And that is one of the seven powers I teach in, in with radiant achievement. So how has ritual uh, really, uh, what does that mean to your journey in your journey of pursuing your calling? Well, for me, one of the things that ritual has had a profound effect on for me is my inner peace. Mm. And, and, and the reason being is a, a ritual, if your rituals are directed in the right direction, uh, they can bring you a lot of inner peace. So, you know, sometimes people don't want a disciplined life, but for me, a disciplined life actually makes me sleep better. It makes me function better and, and, and still having the whimsy and the joy and the fun of doing things, but having rituals that give me consistency of some discipline um, mm-hmm. brings me an inner peace. And so, you know, my teaching is all about, you know, creating these lifelong rituals and mastering what I call the big three, how you move, how you eat and how you think all wrapped up in uh, namaste. And for listeners who are like, what is namaste? I <laughs> mean, um, they're not into yoga. Namaste is a Sanskrit word that means uh, essentially that the divine light in me bows, honors and sees the divine light in you. And when you are in that place and I am in that place and we are one. And so it's about seeing the oneness and the, and the pure love. So when we eat well, and I have rituals for eating, when I move intelligently and mindfully, I have rituals for that. And when I work on strengthening my mind, I have rituals for that. Mm. And you wrap it up in the component of love, of seeing it within yourself and with everyone you connect with. Uh, to me, the rituals that go along with that, and those are the rituals that I teach and in those four areas, these are rituals that if you do those, I believe that you will have more joy in your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and probably financially as well. Mm, That's beautiful. Mm. That's beautiful. It is. You are a ritual girl. And I love that you've taken it in those core areas of, of your life. And I know for me, and I love that you said inner peace. To me, it, when I do have my rituals, it, it brings a richness and a, and a depth to my day, which brings a, a depth and a richness to my life. And because a lot of that is wrapped up in that is mindfulness. So right. when we're doing our rituals, right, we are really focused on that ritual. We're not 15 other places. We're in this moment now. And, and at your, uh, from the day at Namaste, the commitment I made is to give thanks before each meal. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, it's, it's already like slowed me down and, and really, I feel like I've been more conscious of what I'm taking yeah. in my body because, you know, I'm blessing this food. I'm grateful for where it came from. Like, do I know where it came from? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
And so, what I, it, it, so what, you know, that really, and, 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 you know, the listeners may all already know this, but they may think, well, what's the difference between a ritual and a habit? Well, a habit mm -hmm. can be very unconscious, right? We might wake up in the morning and our coffee maker is on an automatic drip and in the morning the coffee's there and we drink and we don't even remember drinking it. A ritual would be, hey, I'm going to make, you know, my green tea. It's going to be loose leaf. I'm going to put it on the pot. I'm going to let it simmer. And it's very conscious and deliberate and in the present moment is more ritualistic versus a habit where it's very unconscious. So it, it does bring, at least for me, a greater inner peace to my life. Right. That's a beautiful distinction. 100%. It is very conscious. That's a yes. huge... And very deliberate. I yes. would say a ritual is conscious and it's deliberate. And, deliberate. and we're, we're doing it um, for a reason. And the habit tends to be more unconscious, um, less, less thinking about the consequences of what we're doing and we're just doing it. Right. right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, that, those are the core questions, questions I had. Is there anything else that you would love to share from, um, you know, Stacy's uh, wisdom to our listeners that are, you know, whether they're again, following their calling, they want to follow their calling or they're somewhere, somewhere in between, or maybe not feeling, yeah, um, too connected with themselves right now. Well, I would say, and a que I get this question a lot is, you know, how do I know what my calling is? I, I want to have a calling, but I don't know what it is. So how do you go about finding it? And I think this is where, uh, again, rituals can certainly come in place, creating rituals of being more mindful of taking the time to examine your life, be more contemplative, looking at where are your strengths, what are your values. And when you, when you know those things and, and what are you passionate about and what are you good at, when you know those things, your calling may just, if you listen, may just show up for you. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Great advice for everybody out there. So, um, Stacey, I would love for people to be able to get in touch with you. And I know I looked briefly um, at your website name, the URL. Can you remind me what that is? Yeah. So you can, you can find me online if you're going to my website. It's a little long, so get your pen out. It's yoga, <laughs> Y-O-G-A, namaste. See, so I mentioned the word namaste, which is a, a big word in my life, but it's with my name at the end of it, Stacy. So it's uh, yoga, namaste, Y-O-G-A-N, as in Nancy, A, M as in mom, A, S-T-A-C-Y dot com. And then I'm also, of course, on, uh, I'm on Facebook as Stacy McCarthy, Yoga Nama Stacy, and I'm on Instagram at Stacy McCarthy 108. And, uh, and, and Twitter is Yoga Nama Stacy. So lots of places. But if you go to the website, all those connections are there. And they're would, fabulous. And, they can, and, and on the website, I have, uh, talking about Mastering the Big Three, I have um, a little book that they can get on Mastering the Big Three of some of the rituals that I do. Beautiful. Yeah. Love that. That's a great, uh, a great gift for them to get. Yeah. So um, thank you, Stacy, so much. Um, hang tight while I sign off with everybody here. And uh, that concludes the, uh, today's episode, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening in. And my uh, wish and dream and goal for you is that you really gain some insights today from the conversation Stacy and I had and that you are feeling more inspired to listen to uh, have those contemplative moments and listen to your calling and then to really honor and pursue it uh, using the powers of radiant achievement. So thanks for listening. And I have a free gift for you on my website also, thechristinehoward.com. And uh, stay, I would love to stay connected with you via um, my social media, which is the Christine Howard also. So thanks again, everybody, for being here. Stacy, thank you for thank having you. this beautiful, uplifting conversation with me today and uh, look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you. You're welcome. And namaste. Namaste. <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs>